first and a warning over what's being shared online after a Liverpool actress was given a suspended sentence and fined thousands of pounds. Yeah, Tina Malone was summoned to the High Court after she broke an order banning the identification of James Bulger's killers. Today she admitted sharing an image of John Venables on Facebook. Matt Donahue joins us in the studio now and a real reminder of people to be careful about what they post. Absolutely. It's a timely reminder that being ignorant is no excuse in the eyes of the law. So back in February last year, the shameless actress Tina Malone posted an image that purportedly showed John Venables, more importantly, what he looks like today. And it also uh, revealed his new name. Well, today the court heard that by simply doing that, Miss Malone had breached an injunction that protected John Venables. OK, now Venables was found guilty of James Bulger's murder, so how come he is protected then, Matt? Well, in short, Tony, this protection is not only for him and for his co-accused, it's also for each and every one of us. Imagine if somebody posted an image of me and said that I was John Venables and this is what I look like today. Uh, it would put me in danger and put my life in danger just the same way as posting an image of what John Venables looks like today may well put his life in danger. More to the point, back in 2001, a court ordered that the whole the whole world was barred from ever disclosing the identity of Jamie Bulger's killers or publishing anything that could lead uh, to us knowing their identity. So basically, this relates to the law of contempt. It's something that you and I and Elaine are very, very familiar with as journalists, but it applies to the whole of the country. And uh, basically, it says that if Miss Malone was to republish any offending material, she would be guilty of breaching this injunction and she would be guilty of breaking the law of contempt, even if she did not know that. This is the media lawyer, Steve Kuntzewitz. This can be a really easy trap to fall into, especially when you're in an echo chamber like Facebook, for example, or Twitter, where a lot of people have a similar kind of opinion of you, where it's easy to get swept up in you know, mob justice, vigilantism. We've seen recently people get involved with exposing who they said were paedophiles over social media. But this goes to show you that if you tweet or you post in haste, you can repent at leisure. Cases like this are relatively few and far between, but if you're going to be talking about anything to do with law and order, if you're going to be talking about anything involving a current court case or even a previous court case, it's worth thinking twice before you hit send. Absolutely. So what happened to Tina Malone today? Well, today she narrowly escaped a prison sentence. She was given an eight-month sentence that was suspended for two years, which means that if she commits an offence in that two-year period, she will be sentenced for that offence, plus the eight months that she's narrowly missed being inside. She's also been told that she's fined £10,000, which goes some way towards the cost. Like you say, this is a timely reminder. Stop, think before you hit send. Absolutely. Thanks, Matt. Thank you. Next tonight, the match commander on the day of the Hillsborough disaster has not been called to give evidence in the trial against him. David Duckenfield has denied the gross negligence manslaughter of 95 people. Meanwhile, one of the charges against former Sheffield Wednesday club secretary Graham McCrell has been dropped. Well, our Merseyside correspondent Andy Bonner is live for us at Preston Crown Court right now. Andy, what can you tell us about today? Yeah, Tony, after nearly eight weeks of evidence from the prosecution, today the jury heard both defence cases in a mere matter of hours. And yes, they were told plainly and simply that they would not be hearing from the former police match commander himself. Uh, his barrister, uh, Benjamin Myers QC, said plainly, uh, we don't call Mr Duckenfield to give evidence, therefore the next item we come to is material from Bernard Murray. Now the court heard today that he was the ground commander on the day but he has since died so the jury were hearing extracts from evidence that he had given to previous hearings. He had described himself as an advisor to Mr Duckenfield and could give advice based on his experience. When he saw a large uh, crowd half an hour before kickoff. He said he was convinced the turnstiles at the Leppings Lane end could cope and he told David Duckenfield they'd get them in by 3 p.m. He told the Taylor inquiry that Mr Duckenfield later ordered the gates open to alleviate a crush at the turnstiles. I never considered where they were all going to go, he had said. The other main news uh, from the court here today is that one of the charges facing former Sheffield Wednesday club secretary Graham McCrell has effectively been dropped. 
because of insufficient evidence. The jury uh, will be directed to uh, deliver a not guilty verdict on that count. Mr. McCrell remains on trial for one other safety-related allegation. He, too, has not given evidence here. But the court did hear extracts from Brian Mole, Mr. Duckenfield's predecessor. He told the first inquest his working relationship with Mr. McCrell was excellent and believed Hillsborough was perfectly safe to be used for a capacity ground. Both defendants deny the charges. The case continues tomorrow with the start of the closing speeches. Andy at Preston Crown Court, thanks very much indeed for that. Thank you.